and good afternoon. It is noon on Fridays, and thank you for joining me for this Lunch and Learn. Now, I'm probably going to butcher this name, so you guys just forgive me. I have been searching the internet for trying to find an audio where this guy introduces himself, and there are plenty of videos, but no, he doesn't introduce himself. So his name is spelt K-N-O-B-B-E, so I don't know if that uh, it's pronounced knob, no, I, I have no idea. So just gonna throw that out there. But we're talking today about macular degeneration. Why are we talking about that? Because macular degeneration, specifically age-related macular degeneration is the number one cause of blindness in people over 50. So guess who's over 50? Me, okay, and some of you are too. And so I found this article and it just, it just says, the title of this article is The Simple Eating Hack That Could Prevent Most Diseases, Including Blindness. And they're talking about age-related macular degeneration. Now, in your eye, I hope you know that you have a retina. It's in the very, very back of your eye. The macula is toward the back of the eye as well. And through aging, and this doctor says through what we consume, we actually are having proteins deposited in the macula that causes macular degeneration. And when you have macular degeneration, you cannot see. Your central vision is all messed up. So um, I have a guide for you. This is a grid, okay? There in the center, right there is a black dot. So if you have macular degeneration, these lines are all gonna be wavy and there's gonna be dark. So what they want you to do is look at the grid and you can, you can just use any grid. It doesn't have to be this grid. You close one eye, you look at the grid, see what you see. If you see a grid, you're good to go. You close the other eye, if you see the grid, you're good to go. I did that, I'm good to go. You may or may not be, and so your doctor's going to check for that because when you uh, catch it early, there are things that can be done. If you have the dry macular degeneration, there's really no known uh, uh, cure for that. If you have the wet uh, variety, then they can give you injections in your eye, which doesn't sound like a fun thing for me. And if we can avoid this through diet, isn't that just the next best thing, okay? So this guy has been doing research for nine years. So that is a long, long time to be doing research. And like I say, if you see wavy, and you can see these lines are all wavy here. If this is what you see when you cover your eye, when you look at a square grid, then you are in the beginning stages or maybe even advanced stages of macular degeneration. Apparently there's not any pain associated with this. And so this doctor, and like I say, his name is Dr. Chris, I'm gonna say no, because I do not know, but I spelled it for you, K-N-O-B-B-E. He believes that it is related to diet. He's done nine years of extensive research and investigation. He has uh, founded a, a foundation that's called the AMD Cure, okay? And that's, all they do is they're looking for a cure for age-related macular degeneration. He believes it is because of poor digestion and poor nutrition accompanied with toxicity from the foods that we are eating. So this is really, really good. So he's got the Cure AMD Foundation, which is a non-profit, which is dedicated to the prevention of age-related macular degeneration. Okay, if he is correct, and he is somebody that we think would be correct. Um, this, if we change our eating, we can also prevent chronic diseases, including type two diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. So wouldn't it be great if we changed our eating habits so that we don't have these diseases? Now I remember being about 20, maybe 25 years younger than what I am right now. And I heard a lady on Christian radio and she was saying that she was giving a, a diagnosis of cancer. The doctor told her, you have weeks to live, go home and get your affairs in order. She went home, she did some kind of research. Now this was over 20 years ago, so I don't know, that was about when the internet came in. 
So when she was doing her research, she um, found out that if you juiced, that you could maybe cure yourself of cancer. So she began juicing like crazy. And when I heard her on the radio about 20 years ago, she had lived, I think it was six years longer, uh, or since, six years since she had the diagnosis. She may still be alive for all I know today. I don't know who she was. I don't know what kind of cancer she had. All I know is she got the diagnosis of cancer. She decided to change her eating habits and she was still alive six years later, way longer than the few weeks that they told her that she had to live. My point is I went home and told my husband, why do we wait until we are sick before we start doing things for ourselves? Why don't we start doing things for ourselves now so that we don't get sick? So I really believe in that philosophy. I believe in that philosophy for myself. I believe that when we know better, we can do better, right? I uh, was raised, sorry, I got an itch there. I was raised in a home with parents that thought drinking soda was a great idea. I enjoy a soda. I didn't realize how toxic they were. And I grew up in a home, right, where people were, um, you know, drinking soda all the time. So I grew up thinking that that was okay. As I got more aware, as I became more educated, I realized how much sugar is in soda. I pretty much cut soda out of my life, certainly on a day-to-day -day basis. I remember going to England, moving, moving to Scotland, and living in a hotel because we were moving transatlantic and asking the wait staff at the hotel if I could have a soda for breakfast. And they looked at me like I had lost my marbles. And I looked at them like, what planet are you from? This is what we do. And so when you know better, you can do better. And so we started changing, not that we had bad eating habits, except for the sodas. We started changing our eating habits. We still continue to change our eating habits. And even after reading this, we still gonna continue to change our eating habits, okay? So he says that the root of all these chronic diseases and age-related macular degeneration is a mitochondrial dysfunction. Now, your mitochondria is the powerhouse of your cells, right? That's how your cells repair themselves. That's how they uh, do what they need to do, keep your body running. So if you have mitochondrial dysfunction, then you're going to be you know, prone to different kinds of sickness and disease and that kind of thing. So, he says that the reason we've got mitochondrial dysfunction is because of the standard American diet. And if you take those letters and you put them together, they make the acronym of SAD, S-A-D, okay? And so he's saying that the standardized American diet, including toxic industrial processed seed oils, incorrectly called vegetable oils, refined flour, refined added sugars, and trans fats all lead to mitochondrial dysfunction. Now, I did an interview, I don't know if you saw it on our webpage, but I did an interview a couple of weeks ago on uh, chronic disease, and the average American consumes 50, sorry, 152 pounds of sugar per year. That works out to about 15 and a half tablespoons per day, okay? So if you drink a soda, one soda, there's 12 teaspoons of sugar in your average soda. So think about how many sodas you drink, think about how much sugar is in there, and that's gonna give you some indication on where you are on the sugar consumption, okay? We don't want to be doing too much sugar consumption. He says, that met, uh, chronic disease and degenerative disease did not exist 125 years ago, at least not to the extent that they are today. In the New England Medical Journal in 2012, the study looked at the history of disease over the past 200 years, comparing the top 10 causes of death in the United States from 1900 to 2010. Now, 2010 was only 11 years ago. In 1990, sorry, 1900, the top four causes of death were infectious in nature. So that was pneumonia, influenza, tuberculosis, gastrointestinal infections, and 
cardiovascular disease, okay? The latter is classified as heart disease, but he said this wasn't coronary artery disease that we have today. This was from an infectious nature. So before 1900, in 1900, the top four causes of disease were infection, all right? He says that the cardiovascular disease stemmed from, get this, syphilis, endocarditis, and rheumatic fever. So still, it was infection. By 2010, this is all changed with chronic disease replacing infectious disease as the top killers. Today, heart disease, cancer, stroke, COPD, Alzheimer's disease, type 2 diabetes, kidney disease are all chronic diseases and they account for seven of the 10 causes of death according to this doctor, okay? I think he's a doctor. I'm not sure what kind of doctor he is, but he's a doctor. I'll, you'll have to, I think he's a medical doctor, but you'll have to look him up yourself. Okay, he says, according to the data that he reviewed, he said diabetes of any type was rare in the 19th century, but increased 25 fold in a period of 80 years, okay? He cites the data that found obesity rate in the 19th century was 1.2%. By the 1960s, it had risen to 13%, which was an 11-fold increase. It continues to climb steadily to today. We look out over the population and we see that two out of three adults are overweight and one out of every 13 adults is morbidly obese. So you only just have to look around and see that we are heavy, you know, as a population, we're heavy. Uh, my husband and I went to Israel a few years back and uh, we, had, we stopped over in Greece spent the night in Greece, caught up with the party that we were going to be traveling with, and then moved on. So we went out in Athens in the evening, and we were strolling, and my husband, you know, he, he looking around, and he looked at me, and he said, uh, what are we looking at? And I said, what? He goes, there's no fat people here. And I said, well, it's because they eat the Mediterranean diet. It's a different food source than what we consume in the United States. Now, he and I consume more on the traditional um, Mediterranean diet. We don't eat the sad American diet for the most part because we are smarter than that. Hopefully, you're smarter than that too, okay? So, um, back to the obesity part. The increase looks, okay, the increase in obesity looks like a 33-fold increase in 115 years. That is a lot. What has changed? Well, the main change is the introduction of polyunsaturated vegetable oils. And again, I'm going to sneeze, excuse me. He says they are named incorrectly because they're not vegetable oils. They are seed oils. He says the four primary components that make up processed food are in turn contributing to chronic diseases such as age related macular degeneration. They are sugar, industrial processed seed oils, refined flour, and trans fats. Sugar has been in the food supply for hundreds of years, but between 1822 and 1999, sugar in the diet increased 17 fold, okay? Cotton seed oil is the world's first highly polyunsaturated vegetable oil introduced right here in the United States in 1866. The entire world, or at least 99.9% .9 of it, had never seen polyunsaturated vegetable oil ever, okay? So I know that a lot of our recipes, a lot of our even healthy recipes call for uh, safflower oil, uh, canola oil, corn oil, um, there's another one. All of those oils are seed oils. They are highly processed and they are almost 100% genetically modified. So 
He doesn't necessarily talk about that in this article, but I'm just giving you that extra information. We don't want to do anything genetically modified, okay? We don't want to. Why is that? Because it is traced with heavy metals, okay? We don't want to be ingesting those. So, the other major change was the invention of the roller mill sometime in the 1880s in Minneapolis. The roller mill gives us uh, refined white and wheat flour, which is a nutrient deficient food. And then the fourth thing, the fourth uh, Im improvement or invention in uh, 1911 was that Procter & Gamble introduced Crisco, right? Now, I remember as a young girl, we had Crisco. We bought it in the, in the tub, the big tub. And we fried everything in Crisco. We did our fried chicken. We did whatever we did with Crisco, right? I have not bought Crisco, oh my goodness, probably in 30 years. Maybe not quite that long. Why? Because it's not a real food, okay? And it is not something that you want to be taking into your body if you are a healthy person. He goes on to say, by 2009, our own USDA reports that these four foods make up 63% of the American diet. So what is that? Sugar, polyunsaturated fats, refined uh, flour, and Crisco, right? We don't want to have those things. And so when we have 63% of the standard American diet and it's leading to the chronic diseases, if we just remove those four things, we're going to be way ahead of the game, okay? Reduce your sugar. Don't use refined flour. Use raw flour. Um, make sure that you use the organic flour because here in the United States, all of our flour is processed with Roundup. It has glyphosate in it. Glyphosate has traces of heavy metals in it. We don't want to have that in our body. Get rid of the Crisco. Go back to butter. Real grass-raised, grass-finished butter. Okay, that's very good for you. He says that these four foods that I just told you, the trans fats, the polyunsaturated fats, the refined flour, and the sugar are the recipe for chronic diseases. He said consumption of processed foods rose and so too did chronic diseases. According to his research, 1851 to around 1930, all right, um, had reached, uh, reaching the 1970s, Okay, he says, as of 2020, 196 million people worldwide suffer from age-related macular degeneration. So it increased and then increased and then increased according to our foods. Now, again, I remember being young. I remember having a young family. I remember being poor. I remember going to the grocery store and there were convenience foods and you could buy we're going to say hamburger helper or something like that for a dollar, maybe a dollar ninety nine. You added some kind of cheap meat to it, and boom, you've got your family food. You go to the drive through to the convenience food, and they've got a one dollar menu. And I understand, I have been very poor, I was a widow, money was very tight, and, and we did those things. Why? Because those kind of foods are subsidized, whereas real food. Your periphery of your grocery store, your dairy, your vegetables, your fruits, your meats, all those kind of things are not subsidized. And so it is more expensive to eat healthy. But you can't get a new body, okay? The, the body that you have is the only body that you're going to get and you want to preserve it. And eating good, nutritious food that has dense nutrient content, even though it is more expensive, is well worth the price of not eating proper and then you've not eaten not eaten properly for 30 to 50 years then you get these chronic diseases that there's no cure for and then you're spending tons and tons of money on prescriptions and blah 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 so don't get me started on that all right he says it isn't always this way. There is a temporal relationship. Now, we talked last week about a temporal relationship. That is a relationship of disease with a causative agent, okay? And he says there is a temporal relationship with what we eat, 
okay, and the diseases that we have. He says it takes at least 30 years of consuming these ingredients before you're going to have a chronic disease, and sometimes it takes at least 50 years. So if you are in your 20s and 30s, you've got tons of times to change your diet. If you're older than that, it's even more important that you start today to change your diet so that you do not become a victim of these chronic diseases. He says there is also a dosage relationship, meaning that the more of these bad foods you are eating, the more disease that is seen. The more chronic disease, the more terrible disease, and the more number, the, the greater number of diseases that you have. So you could have obesity as a disease. You could have heart disease. You could have COPD and heart disease and obesity and diabetes. So the more of the processed foods you eat, the more chronic disease you're going to have according to this research. He cites the work of the Weston Price Foundation, okay, which has a classic book called Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. He wrote this in the 1900s. He did extensive research, and I think Price was a dentist, if my memory serves me correctly. He did extensive research on the link between oral health and physical diseases. Now, there are, there are older, in the 1800s, doctors who said 80% of sickness and disease is right here in the mouth. It's tooth decay, it's bacteria in the mouth that goes through those periodontal ligaments into the different meridians in the body and it causes sickness and disease. So we really need to listen to these people and not discount them just because they're not current, okay? Because they had a lot of wisdom to share. And he's saying that he is looking at this guy and the um, extension of poor digestion, poor oral health, and disease. So, this guy believes that age-related macular degeneration could be called, caused, called diet-related macular degeneration. He said, of, out of all of the components in the processed food, polyunsaturated vegetable oils are the greatest contributor to sickness and disease, comparing them to biological poisons. So, we don't want to do poisons. Even though it has a label, you get it at an American grocery store, it can still be toxic to the body, and you cannot recover from age-related macular degeneration, okay? So, so far, you cannot recover from that, but you can prevent it, okay? So, we're all about education, we're all about prevention, we're all about giving you knowledge. He says... Industrially processed seed oils are not the only nutrient deficient, but are also pro-oxidative and pro-inflammatory. So what is oxidation in the body? Oxidation in the body is rusting, okay? So these industrialized seed oils promote the body rusting out and promote inflammation. Now, if you have chronic inflammation, you are headed for a disease process. We've talked about that. We talk about that all the time, so I don't need to give you too much more information on that, okay? He goes into this uh, article with very much uh, scientific information about how these seed oils are processed, what they do to them, the chemicals that they put them in through. Don't want to even really look at that. I want to look at what can we do. So he says with macular degeneration, fat soluble vitamins A, D, K2, okay, in pastured butter were the likely factor in the marked health difference when they did a study using butter as opposed to the polyunsaturated fats. They did this, I think, with, right, with rats, and the rats that were fed on the grass-fed butter did not have the sickness and disease that the rats did with the polyunsaturated fats. Macular generation patients are vitamin A, D, and K2 deficient. Okay, so what do you need to do? You need to look at your fat-soluble vitamins and you need to get organic 
fat soluble vitamins. Why is that? Because synthetic vitamins get uh, held in the tissue. You can get toxicity from synthetic fat soluble vitamins. So we only want to do organic fat soluble vitamins and they are expensive. Yes, they are, but they're not going to cause the toxicity and that's not what you want. Okay. People who don't have macular degeneration usually have no refined sugar, no refined wheat, no processed foods or vegetable oil in their diet. So there is a, a direct, according to his nine years of research, there is direct correlation between what we eat and our health outcomes. He goes on to say age-related macular degeneration is ultimately a disease process rooted in mitochondrial dysfunction. What else is, right? Cancer is. Cancer is a mitochondrial disease. Insulin resistance and a catastrophic cascade of health declines that are triggered by the long-term consumption of vegetable oils, omega-6s, and other processed foods. So we want to make sure that we don't have that. All right, I'm running out of time, and I know you guys are just saying, well, get to the point. Well, the point is that you want to remove those four key non-food foods, polyunsaturated oils, refined flour, trans fats, okay, and the other one was, let me go back to my deal here, uh, trans fats, sugar, of course, sugar and your seed oil. So you wanna remove all of that from your diet. If you don't have macular degeneration, and we know if we look at, at this and we see it's wavy, we've got problems, okay? If we look at this grid and we don't see waves, we don't have a problem. We wanna keep it that way. We don't wanna have macular degeneration because when you have macular degeneration, you're gonna go blind, right? We don't want that to happen. He says, you can prevent this with your diet. Hippocrates said, let your food be your medicine and let your medicine be your food. And I'm all about that, okay? We are absolutely all about that here at Abundant Health and Wellness. That's why we have great nutritional products. They are mostly, we've got, we've got some lesser expensive brands because not everybody has a bazillion dollars to spend on supplements, but your really, really good supplements have no fillers, no excipients of any kind. They're all wild crafted, okay? That means they're grown where God wants them to grow, okay? They're just out in the wild where they're supposed to grow. They are hand processed, no machinery and that kind of thing. So that is gonna cost a lot of money because you have a lot of man hours in there to get it from the plant, what it looks like, into the nice little capsule or tincture or whatever it is, right? So when you're doing really, really good nutritional therapeutic products, they are all handmade and they are all very, very pure and they will do what you need to do. So think of it as an investment in your future. You're going to have a future. I want to have a well future. I don't want to have a sick and disease future. I want to have a future that's energetic. I don't want to have a fatigued future. And so to, to go forward, and I have for 25, 30 years, I have on purpose chosen foods that I know are going to work with my body and increase my stamina, increase my longevity, increase everything that needs to be increased so that I can be an old lady that doesn't have any problems, right? That's what I want. I want to live as well in my 70s and 80s, and I'm approaching, I'm, 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 I'm heading up there. I want to live as well in my 70s and 80s as I did in my 20s and 30s. But according to this guy, if you're eating the refined flour, the processed seed oils, too much sugar, and your trans fats, your Crisco, right? Then you are setting yourself up for chronic mitochondrial disease, including blindness, okay? So, I'm giving you a lot of information. I'm gonna put the article in the link so that you can look at it yourself and get all that good information. We love you so much. It is the weekend. Take care of yourself. Have some downtime. Have some fun time. And I will see you next week. Thank you for joining me. I will answer all the comments 
in the near future. Take care. Love you. Bye.